Welcome to our program, Reflecting on Jesus. This is the first in a series of seven devotions entitled Reflecting on Jesus. The book of Revelation gives us what are perhaps some of the most soul-searching and heartwarming messages of any book in the Bible. And these are popularly known as the letters to the seven churches by readers and students of the Bible. You may know already that uh, the book of Revelation was not written by someone who was sitting in, an, in a comfortable office or someone who was in a library somewhere, but it was actually written by the last disciple of Jesus, the last surviving disciple of Jesus at the end of the first century AD. At the time he wrote this, he was actually a prisoner on an island called Patmos in the Aegean Sea. His name was John. He was imprisoned by authorities in the Roman Empire. And the crime, the charge that was given to him was that his messages, what he was preaching, was subversive. He was not encouraging people to worship the emperors as was required in those days. Rather, he was pointing people to Jesus. On one of those days, John had a very surprising visitor. This was not a visitor from the mainland of Asia Minor, but actually a visitor from heaven. Who else but the risen Savior himself, Jesus Christ? And Jesus gave some of the most revolutionary messages in, we may find in the Bible, and those messages are what we know as the book of Revelation. And they were primarily directed in the first instance to the seven congregations that were in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. And these messages were addressed to these congregations beginning with the church or the congregation that was in the city of Ephesus. Now Ephesus was the leading city of, the, of this Roman uh, province of Asia Minor. This was the leading city. And the church that was in Ephesus was one of the most important churches in this whole province and of these seven churches that are addressed in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Now, the messages or the message that was directed to this congregation is found in chapter 2, verse number 1 uh, through 7. And it says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have, not found, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Now, that is a mouthful. We cannot even begin to exhaust everything that is contained in this letter. We are going to focus on just one element, one aspect and this is an aspect that is of concern to most professions, perhaps, such as maybe teachers, industrialists, uh, business people, and maybe even doctors. That is an analysis of trends, how things are moving, how things are going. For instance, a teacher may not be content just to have students in their classroom, but they, may be, they are most interested in knowing how each student is doing, perhaps in relation to how that particular student has done in the past. Are they improving or they are actually getting worse in, with their performance? Business persons are interested to know whether they are 
market shareholding is improving or it's actually shrinking and whether their profits are actually improving or they're actually losing. Same with maybe medical doctors who may be interested to know whether their patients are getting better or worse. One other profession that is also interested in seeing trends um, in a similar way are air traffic controllers. We are told that air traffic controlling is one of the most stressful jobs in the world. I have a particular incidents in mind as I say this. That is an incident that took place, a devastating plane, plane crash that took place in the southern part of France on the 24th of March 2015. No one survived that plane crash. But before that plane crashed, there had been persistent efforts from an air traffic controller in a uh, control tower that was actually responsible for that airspace in which that aircraft was uh, flying through. Messages were repeatedly sent to the cockpit, trying to tell the pilots or telling the pilots, please, your plane is losing altitude. May you go back to your cruising altitude of 38,000 uh, feet. That aircraft had been at a higher altitude, but by this time it was losing altitude. When losing altitude, what it simply means, it was falling out of the sky. It was getting closer and closer to the ground. And that is worrisome to air traffic controllers, unless a plane is actually going to land. But there was no airport in that place. It was actually heading toward the mountains. Unfortunately, the worst happened. And that plane crashed. And there was no survivor of the 150 people that were on board. An almost similar situation occurs here in, uh, when Jesus addresses the believers who were in the church in Ephesus. They had been known about 40 years earlier when this church was founded by the Apostle Paul. When one reads through the letter to the Ephesians that was written by Paul to this same congregation, repeatedly Paul mentions of their love. He speaks so much of their love. But by the time John writes and Jesus addresses them through John, he mentions that you have lost your altitude, your spiritual altitude. You have lost your first love. May you remember where you used to be. You used to fly at a higher spiritual altitude. May you go back to that cruising altitude because you are losing out and when losing altitude, it means you are falling, you are crashing, you are going to crash, and it's going to be a spiritual disaster or a spiritual plane crash for this church, for the believers in this congregation. And when, we, when I think about this message, I think, I somewhat tremble and think about my own life and my own spiritual experience, my own spiritual journey. And I begin to question myself, how, what, at what altitude am I flying? Am I still flying at that altitude? Am I still the same Christian I was that day when I was baptized way back in 1993? Or I have become something else? Um, I've lost my altitude with regards to the study of the Bible, with regards to prayer life, with regards to Christian service, with regards to love and genuine fellowship, acceptance of fellow believers. How is my spiritual experience like? That is the question that comes to my mind. And perhaps it is the, a question that also comes to your mind. But you can be sure of this. Jesus is interested and concerned about our spiritual altitude. He is like an air traffic controller, monitoring each individual Christian in our experience, in our walk with him, to see how we are doing. And for those who may be going down, Jesus' message from the control tower of heaven is, may you remember your cruising altitude and go back to where you used to be, to the experience you used to have. Paul was a very disturbed pastor when he wrote to the church in Galatia. He wrote to them as a very disturbed pastor and because they were losing their spiritual altitudes, and he also reminds them to go back to their first love and to the former faith that had been given to them. And similarly, 
Peter also urges believers that he wrote to. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, he says, Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Crave spiritual milk of the word, so that by it you may grow. Are there things crowding out Jesus from your life? Could it be uh, whatever, maybe it could be you are in school, or it could be work assignments, or whatever it is. What is it? Is it in entertainment, internet, and the modern gadgets that may preoccupy us until we lose contact with the control tower of heaven and with the air traffic controller that Jesus is? Jesus is concerned. Let us, as Peter ages, crave the spiritual milk and go back to our uh, spiritual altitude. Let us close our eyes in a moment of prayer. Our kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this message that you gave to these believers many years ago in the church in Ephesus. This message still speaks to us, for many times we find ourselves also struggling spiritually, losing our altitude. But you are that air traffic controller telling us to go back so that we may revive our walk with you. We thank you and we pray that you may revive us in our study of your word, in our prayer life, in Christian service and in fellowship. In your name we pray now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>